speaking about the blessings if you keep the law, the curses if Israel doesn't keep the law on a national basis. And we've already covered from the last message the scripture in 1 Peter 1, 5, that there is a salvation yet to be revealed, and I believe it's a national salvation. But it has to do with that law. Now, the Lord said, as a nation, as a nation, this is what will happen to you if you keep the law. Deuteronomy 28, 11 through 13. And the Lord will make you abound in prosperity in the offspring of your body and in the offspring of your beast and in the produce of your ground in the land in which the Lord swore to your fathers to give you. The Lord will open for you his good storehouse, the heavens, to give rain to your land in its season and to bless all the work of your hand. And you shall, you, 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 you shall lend. <laughs> How about that for a concept, huh? Hey, debtor nation, you shall lend to many nations. But you shall not borrow. And the Lord shall make you the head and not the tail. And you shall be above and you shall not be underneath if you will listen to the commandments of the Lord your God, which I charge you today to observe them carefully. Now, I mean, how can you miss that? Deuteronomy 28:29, still on this concept. More sin equals more poverty. That's what I'm trying to get across. And it only works for Israel. It says this in Deuteronomy 28, verse 29, and we read, And you shall grope at noon as the blind man gropes in darkness. You, you, can you kind of identify that with this economic meltdown? People are groping in the darkness. And you shall not prosper in your ways, but you shall only be oppressed and robbed continually. I thought this big bailout was going to help us. No, you just robbed more, that's all. With none to save you. We're looking, we're looking for a Savior. Save us. You, you don't get anybody to save you, what the Lord's saying. And it goes on. You shall betroth a wife, but another man shall violate her. You shall build a house, but you shall not live in it. You shall plant a vineyard, but you shall not use its fruit. In other words, the property won't be yours. It will be taken from you. Amen. Now, here's a formula for the tares. They understand this economic formula quite well. And then we're going to go to Deuteronomy 28:43 again and also the Proverbs 5, 3. But it says, for the tares, this is the formula. More sin equals more prosperity. More sin equals more prosperity for who? The tares. When you understand that the law was given to Israel, then you can understand that they don't prosper when we keep the law. Are you beginning to grasp why they are so adamant about not even having the Ten Commandments in the schoolhouse for your kids, your children to see? Or in the courthouses? Because their economic prosperity depends upon our sin. And so... The more sin, what happens to them? Deuteronomy 28:43 again, please. And the alien who is among you shall rise above you higher and higher, but you shall go down lower and lower. He shall lend to you, but you shall not lend to him. He shall be the head, and you shall be the tail. If you ever push cattle up a chute, you'll find out that that's the dirtiest end of the animal. It's just kind of a crummy deal there. And so, we go to Proverbs 5, verse 3, to help drive this home. And then when you read this, you'll understand why Hollywood has always promoted sin. Sin. Oh, how you do? My name is Jane. Hi. My name is Frank. <gasps> the next thing you know, they're walking into a motel room. It's just that simple. Sin pushed all the time. Why? This will give you the answer. It says, For the lips of an adulteress drip honey, and smoother than oil is her speech. But in the end she is as bitter as wormwood, sharp as a two-edged sword. Her feet go down to death, her steps lay hold of Sheol. She does not ponder the path of life. Her ways are unstable. She does not know it. Now then, my sons, listen to me. 
and do not depart from the words of my mouth. Keep your way far from her and do not go near the door of her house. Least you give your vigor to others and your years to the cruel one. Least strangers be filled with your strength and your hard-earned goods go to the house of a what? The alien gets our hard-earned goods when we can get us to sin. It's that simple. And you have gotten the simplest economic formula that there is. I've distilled it down from the Scriptures, and I can tell you this, it's not taught in any economy class anywhere in any university in the terror government schools today. This has to do with national economics. I told you that the sermon wouldn't be very well received because it had to do with economics. And people are not concerned about the economy. They're only concerned about their economy. So I want to reach everybody. So I'm going to just take a short, brief period of time at this time in the sermon to give you some personal economic advice. You can take it or leave it. Some of you will have to learn it the hard way. I remember this. I don't have it in this Bible but my other Bible I have at home it kind of got wore out. I remember as a young Christian in the church where I was converted in, they had a retreat right outside of Loveland, Colorado. And one of the elders, and he was a very wise elder, he was, his name was Mr. Belden, he gave a lesson to the young married couples on economics. And he was a very successful man. And I wrote down the main points in that Bible, and I left the Bible there at the radio ranch, but I remember them pretty well. The first point he put down was this, on a personal level. He said, you know, some of you are going to like it, and some of you are going to have to tr try to prove that I'm wrong, that the Word of God is wrong. So go ahead, but you'll, you'll figure it out if you've got any brains over a period of time. The first point was ties. And I wrote that down, tithe. Now, there was a time in my life I decided it wasn't necessary. <laughs> I found out the old boy knew what he was talking about. The second point he had was this. It's so simple. The things that are profound are simple. He said, do not spend more than you make. Oh, duh. Huh, well, honey, that's a good concept. And I wrote her down. The third principle he had was try to stay out of debt. Uh, some of you are going to have to learn that one. And the fourth principle and that helps you to do the third principle, and that was this. He said, buy what you need and not what you want. And I wrote that down. Wisdom, don't you think? And I was learning wisdom from an older man. Now, that doesn't mean that later in life you couldn't buy what you wanted instead of what you uh, just need. But if in early, particularly when you're a young family, if you'll only buy what you need and not what you want, someday you'll have an excess, then you can go out and buy what you want. Does that make sense? Amen. I wrote one down myself. We're going to go to Leviticus 19.11 since I'm on this. I think I have enough time... Because I want to get the prophecy. And I want to, before the sermon is out, to show you an economic indicator that everyone's missing in this whole economy thing. But Leviticus 19.11 has a statement. It's not the only place, but I'll just take this one. It says this, You shall not steal, nor deal falsely, nor lie to one another. What that means is that we are not to steal. We're not to steal from God. We're not to steal from one another. Now, no one thinks of themselves as stealers or robbers. But I want to say this, and then I'll move on, because I'm, I'm going to get into an area that's going to step on some toes, but socialism is stealing, pure and simple. I want to get that across again. Socialism is stealing, pure and simple. 